thank you very much indeed. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, members of the public, officers, both here and uh, virtually, and members. Thank you very much. Um, welcome to the Grants Committee Advisory Committee. Um, today's date is the 24th of September. <laughs> I think where we were. Uh, uh, so we'll just crack on, if you don't mind. Thank you very much. Aaron, apologies for absence. Thank you very much, Chair. Um, we have apologies for absence from the lead cabinet member for finance, John Williams, and nobody else. Thank you very much. Members, for those present, uh, we'll go over this again when, when uh, other members turn up. Have we got any um, declarations of interest with regards to anything on the agenda today? Um, well, only that some of the um, zero carbon applications are from our ward, but then you would expect that, wouldn't you? Exactly, yeah, I don't think that's uh, an issue. Okay, right, if we just move to the minutes of the last meeting, please, I'll go through the normal process of my page. So page one. Um, it says that I'm a director of Care for Network. I'm not. I'm a trustee. Okay. Well, as we change that, thank you very much. Uh, page two. And page three. I'll take that as a, to sign them off, yeah? With the alteration for Sue, yeah? Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, Okie dokie. Agenda item number four. It's the community chest funding applications. Over to you, I think. Vicky, yeah, please. Hi, good afternoon. Thank you, Chair. Um, you'll be pleased to hear there are only four this week, this month, sorry. Um, the first one is for the Shelford Feast, which was a deferred application from the last grants advisory. Um, there was some um, apologies, I wasn't present, so Jay, I understood, did it in my absence. But there was um, some feedback um, from yourselves to find out um, if, you know, how much profit was made on the day. Um, and it, feedback came for, back from the group that they said, although the, um, the overall day was a huge success, they did make a loss of £1,102. Um, so this was initially a retrospective application to help with the start-up costs for the uh, um, the Shelford Feast, um, in which they were asking for um, costs towards putting on the day itself. Um, and they, I mean, they did say it was difficult with these retrospective grants because the, the, the day had already happened. Um, but they, you know, so they'd managed to get the funding to put the day on itself, um, but they did make an overall loss um, from the costs that they put in and the money that they submitted themselves to the day. Thanks. Um, Any questions? Sorry. Yeah. Is that it? Sorry, Vicky. Was... Yeah, no. sorry, unless there's any more info you want on the actual day itself. Um, I, I, I suspect there may be. Uh, Claire, you've had your hand up. Um, uh, yeah, t t two um, points I wanted to make. Um, first of all, I think in the previous application, uh, we did have support from the local members, didn't we? From councillors yes. Fain and, and Sample. Okay, so that yeah. takes care of that. Um, and then towards the bottom of uh, the text, it says, um, over, however, the overall loss reduced the group's reserves. So... Normally, when you have a situation like this, wouldn't you call on your reserves? Yeah, I mean, that the overall loss reduced... Sorry, it's been a couple of months since I looked at this one. Uh, there was, however, the overall loss reduced... Um, yeah, so what they're saying is... Um, it, obviously, they've got a, a, an amount of reserves themselves which they can use to... Which I assume they use to put on... Because initially, as, as we said, it, it was a, a retrospective application, so they dipped into their own, own reserves. And the worry was that they might not be able to hold, well, put in more for their upcoming event, sort of 2022. Um, so um, I'm assuming if they don't get the grant uh, from from us, they might, well, they might not be able to put on another event next year 
or have to do more in terms of their own fundraising to put it on. Um, uh, thank, thank you. Thanks, Vicky. I suppose my point then is that um, are we giving them money which is in place of their own reserves, which isn't absolutely clear. I mean, what, we, what I would support was that they are in a position to put on the feast next year. Yes. Yeah. And yeah. So do we need to give them money now to ensure that they can put on the feast next year? That's not absolutely clear. Because no. I, so that, I think the main thing is that we, keep, we help keep the feast going. Yes, of course. Uh, could I jump in there, please, Councillor yes, Dawson? Okay. Um, I was just going to mention that I think I presented this last mm. uh, month and um, when we looked at it, we decided that we didn't have enough information and we didn't actually know whether they actually made a profit or a loss on the day itself. So we actually went back to them to ask them uh, whether that was the case or not. We didn't actually at the same time ask them about how their reserves looked. So we don't have a picture right now of how much money they have in reserves or not. If that is something that's going to change how the outcome of this uh, grant then we could go back and ask them that but that, you know apologies I didn't think to ask them at the time I didn't think that was necessary so we don't know what their reserves are looking like but they are all, all they tell us is that there is a possibility that they won't be able to do it next year because they have diminished their reserves I think was the what was the words they used but I don't have an exact picture I'm afraid okay hey Peter Oh, sorry. Yeah. I'm just going to say I, sh I should let other people speak. I don't want that to be a sticking point, but I think it's important that we ask the question. Okay. Peter? Um, yes, I, I also agree. Perhaps we should ask the question. To, to be consistent, though, generally when we give grants, we haven't asked organisations what their reserves are. So um, I'm not... But whilst we can ask the question, I'm not sure it should be a determinant, is what I'm saying. I, I, I kind of I, I agree with you. But we do ask for finances, don't we? Right. So I would argue, if if in their application they say they mention reserves, then I would have expected them to put their reserves down. I'd also expected them to have said, for this year it will cost us X to put on the feast, as as we would expect it to cost. Next year we're expecting it to cost with a bit of an uplift of that. Why? And uh, our reserves are such and such, and we're going to be short. I think, I suppose what I'm trying to look for here is a little bit of transparency. I feel like we're having to ask questions each time we come to committee to bleed a little bit more out. And I don't, I don't like that. I would, my, my personal thoughts, and I'm looking to my colleagues, is that we defer this with, again, to the point where the officers can go back and ask those pertinent questions. And we might, and we can explain, if you wish, that we wouldn't normally ask for reserves, but since they've put it in their application, they're asking. Uh, Sue. Uh, I know, I was quite surprised uh, to find that these people are saying that they want to have a week-long um, festival, which is fine, but I found that um, the festival in, festival in my own village needs a between 18 and 20,000 to put on a week long festival. And so it's quite a considerable amount of money that they will need to have in their reserves. Um, uh, and I think we need to take that into account. But there is a, if they're short of a thousand, there is a time between now and when the festival occurs to make up those reserves, if you see what I mean, with Christmas stews and that sort of thing, which I know is what we're doing in my village. So I, I agree with you, Joe. We need to go back to them and just just get some clarity and transparency and yeah. see that they're not okay. thinking we're a free handout for the asking. So do I have that as um, your, your permission to do that? Uh, Councillor Hales, just before we go forward on that, we, as you rightly said, we do ask for financial information from them. So can I just go back maybe while we look at the other three applications and just have a quick look at their very original application 
finances to see if they did include them because we might have the information so if you could maybe look at the other three then come back to this at the end and i might be able to give you the info absolutely that would be the easy okay. way out thank you very much thank you councillor khan you wanted to say <laughs> I was only going to say that you, you say you've got the account, so you should have the information. Yeah. Uh, okay. That's all I was going to say. Yeah. Okie doke. Vicky, number two, please. Yeah. Sure. yeah, sure. I'll push on with the next one. Um, that has come from Duxford Bowls Club um, and their project to make repairs to the Bowls Club house. Um, the Bowls Club has been established since 1991 currently has 33 members who pay subscriptions of £45 a year. Um, the club provides exercise and social activities for its members. Now, the clubhouse needs repair due to the discovery of cracks in the foundations. Um, they've had some quotes for these um, repairs and they've been quoted at costing £3,680. Um, they have provided a, a summary of all the work that needs doing, which has been detailed in the document that you have. Um, I asked for a bit more information um, following on from submitting the initial appendix, um, just to just for a bit more detail about, you know, bowls and and how important the club is within the community of Duxford. Um, uh, so the group described playing bowls as an enjoyable and healthy pastime for the regular players, and they also have some social members. Um, the group also runs sessions for an organisation called U3A, um, which is a UK-wide movement of locally run interest groups. Um, and these prove very popular. So it's not, you know, their, their club isn't just committed to providing information um, sorry, information, it is Friday, um, for providing bowls for their own members, but also the wider community. Um, they also say that people walking on the field often stop to watch, um, and it's a really important club for members who, who live alone, a good way to socialise and alleviate loneliness. Um, so the damage to the building the, um, causes also damage inside, and it has leaked, the water has leaked uh, during heavy heavy rain and damaged carpet and soft furnishings, so they also need to replace those. So it seems that, you know, if this work isn't done, um, then it could um, have implications to the group holding events within the pavilion and also, you know, the post-match teas and, and stuff. It won't be um, a very nice environment for them to stay in. They are asking for a thousand pounds towards the cost of the repairs. Okay, that's that. Thank you, Sue. So. Thank you. Um, I just wondered who owns the clubhouse because they talk about in the revised information, if I've read it right, um, that mm -hmm. the parish council is going to lease the site to them for fifty pounds. Yeah. A year, okay, that's peppercorn rent. But yeah, do does the parish council own the, the clubhouse? In which case, they should repair their own clubhouse. Yeah, they have stated that the parish council own. When we ask who the landowner is, and um, they state it's the parish council, and 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 yeah, you quite rightly say that they stay there doing a peppercorn rent for a fifty pound a year for a ten year lease. So. It does seem that the parish council are responsible. Why they're not repairing it hasn't been detailed, but I suppose they they have the lease. I'm not sure. Councillor Macdonald. Um, yeah, I, I think it's a good question from from Sue. I'm trying to remember because it sits in my uh, ward um, maybe what we do is just clarify if there's a parish council it says the group has not asked the parish council um, so I think we should ask the group to ask the parish council to make some match yeah. funding and if they do that then I would be fine with the award yeah Claire? Uh, I, I, 
that's what I would have said. That's what I will say, rather. Um, I agree with Peter. Um, I, but I think we do need to find out who owns the building. I mean, I think, it, you know, if, if the Bowls Club owns the building, I think it's a good application and I'd support it. But I think we should also ask Parish Council to contribute. So we just defer to further questions now as, as, as reported. Thank you, Vicky. Okay. Okay. So, Little Shelford Bowls Club this time. Um, we, since the appendix was submitted to you, we have had district councillor support from Councillor Fain. Um, Parish Council also support the project. Um, they have supported financially as well in the past, but unfortunately do not have any funds to support them with this current project. Um, the project um, is for Little Shelford Bowls Club, which was established in 1950. Um, the club provide opportunities for exercise and recreation to members um, from Little Shelford and uh, local surrounding villages, such as Great Shelford, Stapleford, Hawkston and Thriplow. And they play uh, matches against teams from in and around the South Cams area. Their application is to um, level the playing surface. They want to improve their playing surface of the bowling green, um, which will improve the quality of games um, for their members and the visiting teams. And it is hoped that these improvements will also attract more members to the club. They have had quotations of works done, uh, which total £2,250. Um, they have detailed the what what's included in that, which is lots of things to do with spiking of greens and scarifying of greens. Um, um, I did ask the group how, you know, if they were successful in their application, how they would meet that shortfall. And they said that they could um, meet the shortfall from their own limited funds, but can af not afford the full cost. And again, they did provide accounts and it was evident from their accounts that they don't have an awful lot of uh, cash in the bank. So a grant towards this would, would go quite a long way. Thank you, Vicky. Claire? Uh, yeah, I, I would support this, I think. Yeah. It's, uh, we ought to be supporting things like this if we can. If, um... Okay, thank you. Um, Peter? Um, uh, yes, uh, a, a supportive. I um, just question whether we want some match funding from the parish as well to be consistent. But otherwise, yes. Sue? Yes, I'm, I'm quite happy with it, although I'm a bit worried about the application of worms' presence in our natural world where birds do enjoy worms. I told you it can wreck a bubble, bubble screen, though. <laughs> <laughs> it's so? Lots of bumps. Right. Um, okay, um, we'll take that as, a, as an, an approval, yeah? Okay, thanks. Thank you. Jay's back. Got any news, Jay? Yeah, um, well, the news is that we've got severe ICT problems this morning, so I can't actually access the files directly. I think um, Vicky's got hold of them, though, and I believe that they have around about £30,000 in reserves. Well, um, I've just had. A look at... Yeah, sorry. Just looking at them very quickly. I have just sent you them on Teams, Jay. Oh, um, right. But the last accounts, um, which were obviously prior to when they paid out for the last feast, um, and it looks as though at the end of that year, 2019, they had £31,000 in the bank. Yeah, unrestricted. Right. I think it's 20, 24. 24, yeah. yeah. Bigger, 24 they had. Yeah. Yeah, yeah unrestricted, yeah. Um, At 24 now, after putting on the feast. 
before that that would have been before putting on the feast. Feast they just done. Yeah. And, but they were only doing it for one day this year, and I believe they said this year's cost would be three thousand. Therefore, leaving them in theory with twenty-one thousand. Yeah. As we can tell. Yeah. Yeah. So. <laughs> okay, okay uh, colleagues, um, we need to make a decision on this one. I think now. Now that we've got some inf further information, I think it's fair. Um. Hmm. It's tricky, isn't it? I mean, they've got, we know now that they've got 21,000 in the bank and they're asking us for 1,100. Um, you know, we want the feast to continue, um, but it doesn't sound as if our 1,100 would hold that up. You know, I'd like to support them if they need the support, but I'm not sure that they need the financial support. I'd like to hear what others have to say. I'm with you, Claire. Uh, I, I feel we have something of a conflict in that they clearly meet the criteria or they wouldn't have got as far as this. And do we have the, uh, I don't know whether to say right or power, to withhold um, the grant if we feel that they don't actually need it. Um, I'm rather inclined to feel I'd like to say we do have that right and that we will not, um, we should not agree it. But I will go along with what the other members of the committee say. So if you work on, is it 3,000, Jay, the cost them to put this on this year? It was only a one-day event rather than a week, but yes. So that would have been a seven-day event. So that, would be 21, that would be 21,000, which ironically is what they have in the bank. So I kind of... Peter, have you got a, a, a thought? I don't, I don't have a strong opinion either way. I'll be guided by others. Okay. Could, could I suggest that we potentially ask them that you know, their event this year has done. They still have healthy reserves in the bank. And when it comes to next year's feast, maybe they, you know, come back to us then if they still have a deficit at the time. Yeah. That okay, might be enough. Um, sorry, I've just seen it. Sorry, Claire. I've, sorry to interrupt you. I've just seen another document, actually. Because, Jay, you said it would, they'd said it would cost £3,000, but there's actually a document here saying the estimate cost of the mini feast is 5,850. So I don't know if that is still, it's still nowhere near 21,000, but I just thought. Yeah, they, they're still gonna have uh, healthy yeah. reserves, which um, yeah. It, yeah. Make a loss of 1,200 quid, or whatever it was, 1,000 and 12, they made a loss of yeah, yeah. nearer three, two rather, sorry. Mm. Yeah. Okay, I Claire. Well, I just wanted to say, if it, I think the, I, I would quite like us to get a message to them that we are supportive of the feast and the community value of it. Um, you know, that they shouldn't get the wrong message, but that um, given that we know what their reserves are, um, we'd rather do what Jay suggests and um, get them to come back to us if they're really in dire straits, but we don't see that they are at the moment. I think that's I think that's the way forward. I'm getting nods. Bill, have you got any comments to make? Sorry. Well, well, Bill, so that is um, I mean, so that wouldn't say anything. He's IT. Um, <laughs> uh, maybe, maybe the last the, the uh, useful last piece of information is just what's their forward projection for yeah. next year. Um, uh, if, if the thousand pound is really going to be material and help to make sure it's going to happen, then then I would be supportive. So that's just the last piece of the jigsaw. Right, we're all supportive. Bill, do you want to? Yeah, first of all, come apologise, Chair, for being late and to everybody. Um, sorry about that. Sticky buns are on you. 
I'm sorry? The sticky buns are on you. Um, I don't think I want to comment on this. I mean, I have to say, when I read through it, uh, it was the one that really gave me some, some trouble. But I'm only coming, I've only come in halfway through the discussion, so I think I won't. Um, I'll abstain on this one. Is that okay? okay? Thank you. Right. I'm, I'm looking around the room here, Jay, and I think we're all very supportive of, of the feast and the principles behind it, and we think it's a fantastic idea. And I'm going to go out on a limb here. I'm going to say to Jay and Vicky that they can go away and get, and get the information that Peter suggested with projections for next year and what have you. And if they are going to be short next year and that £1,000 will do them the world of good, then we will give the officers that jurisdiction, if you like, to then award that 1000 yeah. Yeah? yeah? I think that would be the better way around. Otherwise, we're going to be here all day. And as mm -hmm. lovely as Vicky and Jay look on the screen, I really don't want to keep looking at them. <laughs> right. Thank okay. You. Perfect. We'll do that. Um, so, final one from me um, is the group Sustainable North Stowe. They're a community group um, which was established in May 21. Uh, they currently have uh, 21 members. They are a constituted community group with aims to promote the awareness and to help with sustainable living to reduce climate change. Now, they are planning to hold a variety of events, including litter picking, uh, workshops, talks, swap events, and information stalls at public events about the topic of sustainability. And these events they intend to hold will be within North Stowe and the surrounding villages. In order to carry out these events, the group require an insurance, um, they have provided a detailed quote for the insurance which covers public liability and employers liability and they are seeking grant funding to cover the first annual premium um, as part of their startup costs and the insurance has been quoted at £216 just to get them started. Um, now they, at the time of their application they hadn't asked the district councillor for support. Um, I have emailed them but not heard back as yet um, and also the group had not asked the parish council um, and again I had emailed them um, and I've not been provided with an update as yet um, so that's where that one stands but yeah just start up costs in terms of their insurance for so they can hold these talks and, and stuff ongoing. Thanks Vicky. I think this is going to be a new group in a new town in a new environment where they're trying to find their feet and they probably don't know half the things they can actually apply for and what have you and perhaps they just need a little um, polite dig in the ribs to come back to us to say because they're doing litter picking we can we talked about this didn't we said about all the equipment that we could provide uh, that would help them out so mm -hmm. rather than go and buy it or whatever so I don't see anybody saying no I think this is a, a no-brainer personally, but I think we'd like to extend the, uh, the hand of help uh, for information and guidance, if we may, from, from officers. Would that, would that be okay? Yeah, of course. Thanks. Thank you very much. Okay, that's, that's, that's lovely. Thank you very much, Vicky. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, um, colleagues, members of the public, uh, agenda item number five is the exclusion of the press and public. Um, the press and public are likely to be excluded from the meeting during consideration of the following item of business in accordance with the provisions of section 100 stroke A stroke 4 of the Local Government Act 1972, exempt information as defined in paragraph 3 of the Schedule 12A as amended of the Act. Paragraph 3 refers to information relating to the financial or business affairs of any particular person, including the authority holding that information. Uh, so may I take a uh, or vote, please, a show of hands, rather, as to whether we, we implement this or not. This is going to be in consideration of item six, the Zero Carbon Communities Grant. So do I have a show in favour? That's unanimous. Thank you very much. 